All right, welcome to game four, super hype. We did get from HLE what we wanted to, which was Silas as a first pick, blind pick, but they rounded it out with misfortune. And I really, I really despise this pick for this entire tournament. I don't know that I could think of a time that I ever would prefer misfortune over other options. Even with a pinched pool, it feels it feels inadequate. So we'll see whether or not they can get it. They get a lot of power picks in the Poppy Silas Nar. They're super happy to do it. This time, BLG did not ban away their own jacks. And and so now they're willing to take it in response to the Silas first pick. And they say, hey, if we give bin jacks, we just have really high win chances no matter how you cut it. And I agree, right? Like there's I much would have rathered that they leave Callista open, HLE should have, and ban Jax. You have to take Bin off of the guy off of the pick that he clearly just levels Doran on. And that means that you probably want the the Nar for yourself and you have to take away the Jax. But now at what point are we just putting too much eggs into the draft for topside basket? Because I mean Bin is absolutely gapping Doran right now in the tournament. Uh, and I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna be enough um, to overcome it with you know Poppy Poppy Rel Nar like Silas yeah you've got this big chunky but very low damage composition and then Misfortune that frankly doesn't really do much and needs the perfect situation to get a good ultimate off but Collector's not in a good spot the lethality items have all been nerfed and now it's a Kindred too like Kindred Galio gives your team so much ability to stay alive longer in fights, right? And Kindred Galio is such a nice combination where you say, oh, you want to gnar us into the wall and try to blow us all up with a misfortune combination? All it takes is one Kindred ultimate to keep everybody alive through that. And then the heroic entrance that's going to pop uh, pop over the top and, and crush this fight. So I love this draft from BLG. They do partner Rakan with Kaisa, which is something that's been classic. It's been showing up for about six years now. Uh, just since the beginning of Kaisa, we've seen Kaisa Rakan every single world. And uh, and now you have this AD jungler with AP top and mid. I mean, Jax is a, is a hybrid. He's about 60-40, but a significant chunk of magic damage is all of his abilities since the rework work off of AP. So super happy to to deal some magic damage there with the kindred combination uh it does mean that also with a ranged high damage champion that shun has in kindred that they might actually be able to punish the nar with with a gank when he goes mini all right lane swaps kaisa going to be left alone we do have a little bit of a hov hover from Rakano. it looks like they, they're going to stick here so they want to take this they're going to crash it in you want to give as many of your resources to the kaisa for free Rakan wants to hit level two though before you leave because if you're a level one champion you're just a liability in that dive you don't have enough time to hit level three so you see him hit two and he starts going to the bot side now this is a kindred it's not a champion like sejuani when it's sejuani you expect them to path down here and kind of hide in that spot and you see how they have that ward down that's a preparation for the dive that they'd like to execute in the bot wave right they want to know is anyone rotating through these positions and that is a ward that we've been touting forever uh blg bin might try to go forward and just use his e on the wave looks like they're going to go for a two-step dive here rakan has double shields all right, they're they're surviving just enough. Delight takes two hits. Bin survives. If they if they actually live through this the entirety of this, then they're going to be in such a good spot. Uh, big big deal right here. Whether or not you get the cannon, I'm. This is on the edge of our seats right here. They do get the cannon. They play a little bit a little bit aggressively, saying that hey, we can take some damage back. Rakan with a great interrupt here, but look how many resources they had to use to get that kill. I. You know, he's going to teleport right back to this and only lose four caster minions. He got everything else. Everyone from HLE needs to back on diving forward, knowing that he has the resources to block them. Look at this. They're going to be super delayed. This is a fantastic play by the Rakan. And remember when I told you earlier in game three that he was able to take aggressive actions when the other other team knew that his team would be strong, but like where? Jax is coming back. They know that they have no cooldowns and no 
mana or HP bars. So Rakan flashes forward to interrupt backs. This is such a colossal play for them because it allows them to get the full reset on the wave. That's going to get them whatever lane state that they want. Jax is going to be happy with the lane bouncing back. Kaisa has a wave bouncing back for herself as well. So BLG gets a lot out of that, even though HLE got the kill. BLG gets a ton. Now, this is going to be their window. Jax never used his flash, so he's still going to be relatively safe in these positions. He also went for Grasp, which is much harder to exploit than a Conqueror Jax. It's one of the reasons that they like Grasp, is that it gives you that extra source of 50 HP early in the game, and it makes you that much more resilient to a gank. You know, one more auto attack makes a big difference when it comes time to trading with turrets. Uh, a 300 damage turret attack is, is going to outscale your extra level 2 auto. So that is one of the reasons they're going for what they do. Bin picks up this wave. Remember we said that we got the rebounds? It, they put it right into his pocket right now. Misfortune pushes it up. Doesn't get anything in the meantime. So really you just gave the gold to Jax by pushing that wave up. And, uh, and now Bin's going to be sitting pretty. He's gotten everything that he that he needs out of this what could have been a tragic position for for his team they get just enough and i'm telling you man every bit of those elements sticking around to get a little bit more experience getting that cannon experience the fact that rakan was able to get level two and show up in time the entire strategy by hle was meant to exploit that level one and that little bit of a delay is the difference between bin coming out relatively unscathed uh, because the enemy team had to spend so much to do it. Big winner in lane swap is always the junglers, right? Especially if they're not the ones that are required to be part of the play. Peanut had to be part of the play, which means his flash is down. Kindred was able to to free farm. And you can see it already, a three camp lead, uh, basically going to be four camps. Shortly, because Kindred's going to go help to push. They're going to use mid prior. You've got Galio and Kindred that can now move up, and they're going to have priority for this pick. Kaisa happy playing ranged versus ranged against the Nar, although you will have to be careful at level 6, obviously. But they're happy put, sticking Kaisa there, saying, hey, like, you can't do that much to me right now. Yeah, but you've lost Pryo, right? They lost that wave mid to come for this play. So now that's another half step down, and they're still outside, right? They're still on the outside looking in. That's one of those uses of a proactive flash that can buy your team so much space. Like, yeah, my cooldown might be worth more, but if it means that my team has imminent HP, mana advantages, Pryo, whatever it is, it can be worth it. And that's uh, we've seen that from on as well. We saw it with the early flash. An early use of an aggressive summoner spell to buy space for your team is chef's kiss it's beautiful it's a thing of beauty to watch this is the blg that we expected to see and uh, honestly if they're playing with this swagger this confidence right now i'm pretty pumped to uh to see their chances in the rest of in the rest of the tournament because i think that blg at this level will beat hle that said we got zeka on his silas so you know here's looking but i'm Ugh, I'm not excited about misfortune. With all the circles, being able to auto attack outside of some of the circles is big, but the sequence we just saw, I think, was actually attached to the sequence we saw right at the start of the game, where HLE had a gold lead, but we were saying BLG had experience advantages and tempo advantages, and they just patched some of it in there by being able to get... Hold on. First in the bot lane, oh boy. And Ben yep. trying to cash in more. <laughs> yeah. In level six versus level five. Spike steps ahead, gets it first because of the minions dying first. Goes up, plays super aggressively. Love to see that. Bin Bin plays with every single piece of leverage that he has. His fundamentals are on point. It's just every single time that he knows that he's going to have a little bit of an advantage. And then he goes in and still outtrades you mechanically. Guy plays at a whole nother level in top lane. Absolutely the guy that you want to follow. If you want to see what you know, what's missing in your game that you can try to replicate, just watch Bin play. This guy's on another level. Alright, casters are talking about misfortune, but uh, this is a vamp scepter on misfortune, which necessarily means that it's going to be low damage. And again, this is this is left over. 
This is a relic from July, guys. This was when Bloodthirster was completely overpowered. And yeah, you could go Bloodthirster first on every single carry. When you go Bloodthirster first on Misfortune in this patch, all right, we're in 1418. Bloodthirster first does not do any damage. They just walk out of your ultimate. There is nothing to it. And so if you're walking up and saying, let me just use my strut and go for extra attack speed and try to fight you, they just don't need to take that, right? They're moving away from these fights. You have these lane swaps. They're gonna, they're going to find other avenues to get their resources. I I despise this strategy for, for Misfortune in this metagame. So Alright, Galio's gonna look to push. He's almost definitely looking at his recall at this point. He didn't get an assist. They didn't get any kills or assists on that fight for the Void Grubs, but because they got the Voids in, it means that any time that there's a delayed rotation, they can play for they can play for advantage. It's a nice sidestep by Jax there. Even though he gets thrown into the wall, basically Doran had to use that to have any chance. Uh, you see the plated steel caps, meaning that the Jax can basically ignore the NAR damage. Poppy's going to have to run away, but uh, does that mean that this red buff Kindred can can chase down Zekka? They decide that they don't have enough information. They should have. The call could have come out that, that Nar was going to be out of position. It is past the empowered teleport window, though, so maybe they, they weren't too keen to uh, walk into a teleport range where they'd be fight, fighting 2v2 versus a Nar that had a shop under his belt. Kindred, Kindred is springboarded in this game. He's going to feel very, very strong. So this is Shun's game to to carry. We'll see what else they get for it. I mean, Bin's obviously already playing on another level. And Knight's been playing great too, right? And like on this Galio pick, it's going to be so hard. You have dive, 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 dive. These two champions press their R buttons and say, okay, now what? And then coming out of it, the Galio landing on the Kindred ultimate necessarily gives the pivot point for the Rakan to springboard into the fight. It also gives Jax the tool that he needs, like the area that he wants to jump in. So this is a fantastic draft from BLG. I can't wait to see how they position, how they look at the wards, like how they try to get into position to bait the fight that is going to allow them to steamroll. They are down in gold though. That one kill, you know, they, it's still there on the scoreboard. They have the three grubs for themselves, but it's three to two. So any amount of pressure on turrets, three to three now, any amount of pressure on turrets will will result in plates going down. You've got three, two and a half minutes left on the plates. Are they going to wait for spikes? And if it's spikes, where they can wait, they're going to feel very comfortable that this will get outscaled. This will get outscaled. Jax is going to outscale. And then compositionally, they just have such a good fight. So if you're BLG, you can wait, wait, wait this game. Uh, basically trade opposite sides over and over. You don't need to take any big fights into Misfortune while she's at her strongest, which is basically right now on this uh, Bloodthirster spike. So Zekka is looking to play aggressively. The rest of the team's not quite in position. BLG just weathers the storm, steps back, repositions. Kaiso is able to get a free wave for themselves. Dude, Bin is not missing a click. He's dodging every single skill shot from this NAR right now. He just has, he has Doran downloaded. It is, it is insane to, to think like those levels, those skill shots that have this brick and he's standing right here, but he's already perfectly moving at a 90 degree angle. And he just knows like, this is the time. This is when he's going to throw it. And he might even, I mean, for all I know, he could be working on the reaction of the animation, the NAR turning up his shoulder to like get it ready to throw the rock. Could be what he's looking at. All right, Rakan says, right, it's to my, my time to go in. Poppy tries to ult him, in, ult him back, needs the play is off. Ult for ult, but they do get Zekka's teleport as well. All right, Kendra Kaisa might look to take this. Yeah, they've got a play here. Teleport going from the Galio. They're going to take this. This is a 3v2 with no answer available because Nar and Silas don't have anything left. Oh, Galio missed his uh, missed his dash, so there is a potential point of strength there, but they're going to give that kill open over to Kaisa. Kaisa springboards ahead of the misfortune. They let the rel go, of course. Of play there, HLE 
thought they had a nice map play when Peanut was able to reject the dive and they could get the... All right, so they do get the turret, right? They did, they, did they finish the turret? They did, right? So they finished the turret. So Misfortune's still going to have a little bit more gold. You see the BF sword in the inventory right now. So they may say like, hey, we're actually still kind of strong. Even though we died here, Kaisa has not shopped yet and is playing just on this static shiv. We might be willing to take a fight right now. So expect them to go and move forward into the Rift Herald. Nar is mini and about to go mega and the teleport's not ready. So this is a slight mistiming, which means that he's probably going to commit to pushing. But this, this is a... This is dissonance in the team strategy, right? If this is the fight that, you, that you're meant to play on and you say, hey, look, I've got Bami Cinder and Locket on my Poppy. I've got, my Silas knows that it's time. My, my misfortune is stronger than the counterpart on the other side. This was your moment. And then you don't get the teleport in. There's no window. Nar pushes in the wave. But that's such a small victory, right? That's a one wave win when the other, other team gets Rift Herald. That's not even close. So... A little, a little bit of dissonance there. It's not looking good for HLE, guys. If you're HLE, if you're both teams, right? We talked about this before. Assume there's a game five. You just have to assume that this is what's happening. If you're a coaching staff, do not ride on the emotions of this game. You need to start preparing yourself mentally for the next one. What are you going to say to your team? What are you going to prepare strategy-wise? And if you're BLG and HLE, you can you can assume that this won, and you can start figuring out why would it have won, especially from this position where you're feeling so strong. How could it win? And if it does win, what do we need to do differently in game five? That's what you should be doing if you're in the back room as, as part of the coaching staff here. If you're HLE, what are you trying to do? Again, like it's you're trying to get this big wombo combo, one, two, three, these forward into this cone. Uh, we call this a snow cone fight. Anything that results in like this spray in this area, right? You try to lock down an area and then you try to spray through it and past it. And basically that's what all these champions are going to do. Try to knock someone into a spot. Uh, the greedy version is to get them into a wall. It tends to be the easiest with Poppy and Gnar. You get extra benefit, but you may not find that. And the key to fighting against some of these teams who team fight really well and don't let you get them to a wall is to predict and say, hey, I need my Poppy to put up the Steadfast Presence as I throw with the Gnar. Then she can knock them up again. Rel can jump in and vacuum them in again with no wall needed. And then you can spray through with everybody else. So the Wombo is still there. They have chances to do it. Uh, Zekka has plenty of gold in, in his pocket and he's going to be in the right position. And he's on one of his favorite champions. So maybe... The, what just happened? Was that a double hitch from the Herald? Um, they... That's what they're looking for. But Bin is going to outscale this Nar on the side lane. The team fight with these two ultimates to deflect, say, hey, that's great. You can do that perfect play. But if I get either of these spells off, you're in a lot of trouble uh, to try to figure that out. Especially, especially this one, right? The Kindred ultimate is just so, so, it's an ace up your sleeve. So uh, multiple times this series, we have seen the bait and switch where you come back, you bait the fight, then you realign, and then you come back and fight again. If you can go in and bait the Kindred R, then this is the kind of position that you're looking for. Get the Lambs or Spite or whatever it's called um, on cooldown, and then go back in, right? See, like, get a major cooldown of one of these two defensive ultimates, maybe even the Rakan one, uh, but definitely Kindred is the one that you're go gunning for, and with Kindred Ultimate on cooldown, uh, that's when you're going to go for Windows. Bonus points. You guys can leave in the comments if you know it. What's Kindred's ultimate cooldown? Knowing that answer can be the difference between HLE finding a window in this game and not finding a window, right? If you can, if you can actually diagnose that, hey, it's time or hey, it's not time, uh, the exact amount of window that you have to punish a Kindred Ultimate is a big deal. Now, what spikes would I want to face on? I want to get Riftmaker complete and Zonia's complete on my Galio. 
before we do anything. I probably want Merc Treads to make sure that I can't just get Change CC'd. I want to make sure that I've got my spell off. Plus, it gives me some ability to, to move around in the fight a little bit more. Although, most times, it's just going to be Ult in, Dash, cast my W, like, just take up as much space as possible. There we go. See all that? They just stop it right there. They don't go any further. They just say short trade, little chunk, get a couple cooldowns. A little bit of HP, that's enough. Aftershock and bone plating down. We can find other windows later. We're going to be super patient. We're going to walk up our line of scrimmage. You see that they take that one, two, three wards on this side, and it coincides with a mid push. All right, so they go for a proactive plate. Now, this is the window. All right, this is your window. You have to punch right now if you're HLE. They decide not to. Misfortune's plugged in mid lane, saying I've got my infinity edge and I want to go back for it, I guess. But this is going to feel weird. Are they going to try to catch them on this rotation? Very mobile champs. Very hard to, to get that catch. Now Misfortune addressing the wave means that you just don't get anything. Here's the window. There's no Galio ultimate. So they do get one back. A little bit of a mistake by BLG. Like, why, why are you passing through here when this area you just gave up? So a little bit loose. Maybe a little bit of nerves. But good job by HLE finding a window there. Misfortune getting the gold too. Important for them. God, I hate this Bloodthirster, guys. I hate it. It was on Kindred, right? Kindred is someone that you're trying to scale up into the game. You'd much rather see like Rakan die. Kindred still has her ultimate. It was interesting that she didn't use it. I don't know if it was perfectly timed CC that she didn't want to use it. Or she just says, you know what? I need it. I want to save it. We don't have the Galio ultimate. I don't want to give them a window where if I drop this and still die, that now we don't have it for the Baron. So giving it up and saying, hey, I can be back on the map, that might be an active choice that they make. Poppy, Rel, and Gnar ultimates are still down right now. Or Gnar just went down to try to get a little bit of uh, wave pressure. But Jax is annihilating him in the in the side lane. He's up a half level, has a, a half item as well. Oh, Caulfield's Warhammer is pretty comparable to the two Ruby Crystals. Uh, but Gnar, oh, Gnar, Gnar sold their Doran's item? Why? Doran's items are so good to carry into the end game now. You normally don't get rid of them. This, this is a problem, right? So this must have been a sell to finish Triforce, but that is rarely worth it anymore because of how good the Dorn's items are. You're much, you, unless there's a specific reason that you absolutely want that Triforce spike. The fact that he doesn't have it means that he's down a tremendous, this is worth like, you know, right here, Caulfield's plus Dorn's is like a half item. All right, good position here. Kindred's going to be able to take the fight right in this position. They're, they're happy to take it. Uh, stepping back, we see a reposition on Galio. He's going to come in here and close the door on them now. Nar does go forward, but here we go. Kindred ultimate he gets it off just in time. Galio keeps him alive with the shield. Now BLG's going to turn the fight. They turn the fight left to right. They say we're, we're going to skip in the direction, but we need the whole team to be moving together. Kaisa finds one, another one. And this is exactly what we talked about in the fight. If you go after that Kindred, you have to get the kill. Nice moving by On. Limit testing. Limit, limit breaking. You know, he knows exactly where the limits are. That is the perfect fight. It's exactly the type of fight that we've mentioned all game, what they're going to try to do. You need to be able to get this. And remember we said that he maybe kept Lamb's Respite like there so that he'd have it available. When, when he needed it for this fight, well, it just came in. And uh, the Ace up their sleeve. Everything gets used to try to go forward, and it's and it's not enough. Now, there is something we haven't spoken about, which is Silas stealing a Galio ultimate. Hold on, let's watch this. Here we go. Galio, we're jumping in. Kaboom. All right, so this Silas ult does very, barely anything compared to putting it on the pile. They could have alternative, alternatively stood in the in the middle of the pile. Right here, you see the, how they consolidate their teamfight position and they keep on moving together using this as their point. They drop the wards.
So if they could have gotten everyone on the on the kindred bullseye, then they could have said, let's jump in and everyone get in this and then we can protect. But because they skipped ahead and they used an R on the NAR, the, Gal the Silas stolen Gallio heroic entrance onto NAR means the enemy team can just split right up on top of you. Something I just noticed, and I don't know if these teams are doing it on purpose, but I think that I've just seen a pattern from BLG. BLG drops wards in the middle of the fight. And if that's like their shot call of, hey, like this is our this is our pivot point, then that would be incredible. This ward right here needs to be a little bit further back to exploit this ward where you can still see, right? You want it right back here on the edge. They're going to get information. The damage is not very high. Misfortune, again, with the Bloodthirster just not dealing too much to this. They're going to try to set up this, this cone right here because with ultimates down, with the Galleon Kindred ultimates down, they can say, well, let's take it. If you're if you're BLG right now, you have to split and come in two different directions so you don't get that big wombo. Nar just pulled backwards and used his Nar, his, uh, Nar ult defensively. Misfortune's barely going to get anything. They're chain CCing on, on Knight, which is something, but they're dying on the other side of the fight. Right, even with Misfortune basically dealing maximum amount of damage. Look, they're leashing the Baron. They want to keep it here because Kindred's just coming back into the fight. They're saying, hey, we've got this. They don't have enough AoE damage. Kindred's actually pressing forward. They use the ultimate to keep him alive. Now, that's going to keep a spawn right here. That means that it's going to be a coin flip coming out, and Blue Team actually wins this. I don't mind the call, but that was... The call to re-leash and keep it there was fine, but for Rakan and Kindred to try to step forward by themselves into that area, especially when they don't have vision of this part of the river, super, super risky and loose. <sighs> wow. All right. So... Hold on. Let's break this down. All right, so the approach, right? We're looking at Zeka's position. Uh, able to take a perfect flank angle right here. Don't We don't see what ults he has access to right now. But this is the sort of position we were talking about. This team, Misfortune, and then you create the snow cone, right? That's going to go in this direction. As... So they're coming in. We see one cooldown down. They're using this. They've got the control ward down. So you see a little bit of vision guaranteed for here. Now another one, right? This line. One, two, three control wards saying that we're willing to slide left to right and kind of pull back as a team and know that we have control of the vision as we continue. Now we come forward at the beginning. Galio commits. Now once the committal, once the commitment happens, you have to be very careful as BLG to not get cut in this full zone because the Kindred Ultimate, Galio Ultimates, you're still playing from cooldowns from Dragons. So uh, you have to be very, very careful on this side. Now, a little bit of dissonance right here is how far ahead of the team we have uh, Zekka and Delight peeling against these carries. Yes, you're doing a very significant amount of work, but you'd much rather have this happening here with Misfortune able to step forward because she's not able to go any further. You end up just dealing damage to one of the tanks. And yes, it's enough to get a damage on Galio. But while your team is retreating, the whole time BLG is able to keep on chunking damage. So I love that play. Poppy doing what Poppy does here. Knocking out the Kindred. And this, this might be where Kindred's saying, leash, leash, leash. Like, hold the Baron because we have HP leads, right? Kindred's basically full health. And then you have large health on Elk. So your two biggest carries are still going to be okay. Plus, Bin is as tanky as he is, so he's leeching as well. Problem is, you're going to give all the cooldowns to Silas. Misfortune is also still a problem, right? Super, super healthy in this fight. They leash here. Kindred jumps in. All right, so this line of scrimmage, how would you play this fight? You guys can take a second, pause the video. Let me know how you would approach this fight now that the call is on, right? You've made the call. Here's the difference between a good shot call and a bad shot call. If it's leash it, leash it, leash it, I can come right back. That becomes very panicked and your team just thinks about that one thing. If you can continue the call and say, leash, I'm going to jump in and let's look for X, Y, or Z. All right, or let's look at X and if they Y, then we Z. That's what the shot call needs to look at. It needs to be very calm because in this moment, a lot of hectic things are happening. You need to make sure that you're able to deliver it quickly, succinctly, and clearly. This little bit right here is the mistake that we're going to talk about. Shield and dash. Once Kindred dashes forward here and Rakan says, let me go for faster forward into this, it's too far away from where Jax is, right? You had to wait a little bit longer. This leashing position is going to be fine because you're very confident either with the Kindred execute 
Um, and especially you can almost always win smite fights because you can cast your ultimate when, when they're looking at smite. But this Jax is way out of position based on where the rest of the team is. So if we back it off just a little bit, right? Like how does Jax get into this position? He decides to go all the way around. He's saying, all right, leash, leash, leash. He's looking for a new position. This is a mistake by Ben. You do not need to go this far out your team. If they're calling leash, that means you have to put pressure in this line and try to push them back here. Jax is the strongest person left on the map right now, and he can push through this and he can win against Silas. But by excusing himself to the backside, now it's 4v3 in this window. You get a, you get a significant amount of chunk damage back. Rakan reaching for this means that you just have Poppy deflecting, and now Kindred needs to use the ult very, very defensively. Now Bin jumps in, Counter-Strike is being used, and then they're gonna use the stuns right here, but who wins from this spot? By the way, Baron can't even be smitten right here, worth noting. When you go in and you deal that pop damage right before the Kindred ult, if the timing were just slightly later, you would have been stronger. But again, a lot of this came down from so many resources had to be used. Hey, wait, we don't have Jax yet. Then you have to reposition. If they had been a little bit more patient and let Jax move up into this position and really push them back, then they could have used vision advantage and continued. But as played, they end up uh, getting strung out at the end. So super tense now. We've got a uh, four and a half K gold lead and Zekka's going to be on Silas. He's hitting level 16. Nar might actually get back into this game now off of that performance. Two, one and three now versus zero, two and four from the Jacks means that Nar actually springboards ahead and completes the Steric gauge. So they have the elements now that they may be looking for. Uh, two, they, you have the, the spike on Silas. This is where you want to fight if you're him, and then we also have the spike on the jungler. So this is perfect timing right now for HLE to try to take this game home. All right, problem for them, these ultimates are back up now. All right, so the, the team synergy, we're gonna see the compositional difference. Uh, I think this is enough of a gold lead. This is enough of a gold lead where HLE with good execution can win. It looks like they're trying to force here. Zekka's trying to move in forward. Knight's going to be able to hold a lot of space. This this team will outscale you, though. So you need to... It is on HLE. It's their prerogative. They need to get things done. And they don't really have enough of a head start to, like, call any of these game-ending advantages. And with the Baron right now, they've been zoned off the mid-wave, which is exactly what BLG wants. So they can say, all right, let's take this slow. Let, let it let it leash. Let it take a long time. We've got position for a flank on this side. Bin's going to come in from late side. Kindred does win the smite fight. And uh, Jax jumps in with the flash and the counter. They go for an aggressive play. I love it. Enemy team is looking for you to try to be defensive. They jump in. Let's see the reposition. Kaisa keeps on going on the fight. Shun is playing 1v2 on the far side of the map. They should try to consolidate their position. Whoa. Beautiful job on his on his kindred ult. I love the flipped switch right there. Everyone thinks that you are going to play defensively and wait for them to come to you and that you have to counterattack. What better play to make than counter strike? Jax jumps in, gets an area of effect stun, Galio jumps right on top of him, and they just take the fight uh right off the bat. And not only that, but they also picked up the dragon to boot to, to begin. Ooh, Zeka did not want to hit that. So close. It feels like it shouldn't have been that that close, but man, it was that close. Look at this position, right? Bin's just holding this line, just like Nuguri used to do on on Kennen, right? You come through this position and you're threatening imminently. Zeka's trying to hold on, and he has the second Galio out, saying that hey, maybe we can play for this. Boom, both, both entrances coming at once. They get the one kill up front, but that means that Bin's able to go. They reline on this side. Now you have two different fights. Four versus three is always going to be better than two versus one. As far as total amount of damage, you're going to deal more damage up front with your four and more likely to get one kill up at the beginning. And then you can reposition because Kindred gets that ultimate to put them into, into the right spot.
I don't know if I would call it a huge gold lead when uh, Misfortune's buying Bloodthirster. <clears throat> and when you play Misfortune. Uh, never never got a good chance to just line themselves up, right? But they're still in it. They're still alive. It's it's one dragon to three. Compositionally, they are out-drafted. But you are going to have level 16 coming through on the Gnar and the Misfortune. Uh, this is their window, right? Poppy can, can potentially knock someone out of the fight. If you're HLE now, this is what you're looking for. You need to send someone off to Neverland. And while they're gone, create the rest of the fight. So maybe, maybe what you can do is bait out a fight where you start in, you, you do the, the hook and switch here with Poppy, engage. You try to get the beginning of the fight where you start this. You try to bait out both of these ultimates, but those ultimates are going to end up together. If Poppy can then slam them for a home run, knock them out of the park, then you might get the fight that you're looking for. Hold on, Knight's, uh, Knight's in trouble. They do get one pick for themselves. Knight in a really weird spot. Okay. They get a pick for themselves. That's going to be good enough. And that's 30 seconds until until Baron. So they're in position here. Galio does have his teleport. Now they are. They're going for the greedy play, which is turret and Baron. But look at this ping right here. He's already pinging. This is my spot. I can come attack them from here. It is a control ward, so they will see it on the minimap when he does teleport. Bin should be able to get a lot of pressure here. If they can stall... With these three, any amount of time, if they can stall, they'll be okay. Galio's going to come back. He won't have access to his heroic entrance, but uh, Kindred is close to level 16. If they can get that, that might be a big difference here. They might. I mean, it's going to be a delayed answer, right? Here's the, here's the ping that we were talking about. They got the wave into bot side. Jax has now got the perfect position here. rest of the team's coming up. He uses Counter-Strike early, just defensively. Then Zonia's by as much time as possible. Here comes the ult. He never got the ult off. Bin never got the ult off. That's such a big deal. Okay, but that's a lot of cooldowns that are down. Look at them repositioning. Kindred's looking to be really strong here. Still level 15. Uh, you, I think you have to call this off if you're HLE. It's 5v4 again, and you're missing out on, on Wave's bot, bot side turret. Gets destroyed. They come back in after after they reposition. They say, all right, we see them showing up on mid lane, so they're being aggressive. Jun is trying to hit 16. He gets it. He's got 16, so that's huge for them for the fight. Look at this. They put the wolf right here. So they say, this is our spot. This is our line of scrimmage. Poppy's trying to jump into the middle of the fight. They do get a little bit of up front here. They do not They do get the kill. Okay, Galio shows up. There's Misfortune Ultimate right on top, baiting the effects. Knight is holding so much space right now. My goodness. Viper just flashed into that, into the Kaisa W, taking a significant chunk of damage. Good job by the Galio to show up right on top of this. Man, this is on a knife's edge. Look at this. Elk is free firing the whole time. They've got a control ward in the bush, means that he's able to deal all this damage. He gets a kill in return, and he zonias in response. He uses E to dodge. There's no way. Wow. Wow. <sighs> Kites of things, guys. Misfortune can't do that. <laughs> All right, there we go. Rakan, good job with the stall. You see them stalling at the beginning. Good job by punishing. They make them use as much time as possible to, to start off the play, and they try to punish Galio as they jump in. But Galio, look at how much space he's holding, and the whole time Baron's ripping into the enemy team there. So they say, hey, we can make this call. We can continue the fight. Knight with a big taunt coming out of that. Perfectly timed. Gets as much down as possible. This control ward is the difference. The ability to elk to dodge in the middle of that fight. Lands the W perfectly coming out of the Zonias. How do, how do you get that E off, man? Dude, that is... These guys are hyped. I'm so, I'm so happy for them. This is their life, man. This is their best life. This is what you want. You come to this game and you want to play with this amount of tension, this amount of responsibility, and show greatness. Whoa, big pick. Okay, but it's on It's on the Rakan. So now they get the continuation on the fight. Three beefy guys get to continue this fight. They do assassinate the Misfortune. Kindred Ultimate is available. Kalio's just holding so much space, guys. This champion is so insanely strong. And the strength, right? The delayed, the amount of long-term fight that you get from Galio and, and Jax is just insane in this game. Gets the slow off, that means this guy's going to die. All 
All right, now you have to be careful. You're going a little bit far. That might go in. All right, there we go. Silas picks up just grabbing an ultimate, but that's not going to be enough to do anything. So they're going to pick up soul for themselves. And now this wombo combo into, into mountain soul becomes almost impossible. You're, you're going to have the extra gold here, but uh, you can dash in and use the kindred ultimate. And if you could potentially time it in response to smite, then you could potentially turn it into something for yourself. But if you die there, your team absolutely loses the game. So was that your best chance? I don't know. It would have been I would it would have been so hard to do. And how many times have have you practiced stealing a kindred ultimate to try to try to save a dragon and also once you get the heal coming in it's not like it you're going to be in execute range anyways kindred has a better execute than you do so they say live another day face down against this level 18 jacks we're going to have full builds coming in soon <sighs> this is a crazy game guys hle has a chance to uh do what they're calling the red road Beat all the Chinese teams the way that T1 did last year. The way that the draw shakes out, but I uh, might get bricked the first round. Here we go. Tons of damage there on the backside. AoE damage being actually what takes them down. You see that they get that control ward down? This can be really dangerous if you saw how that fight went in and out of the bush for a little bit. The fact that blue team had a bush, uh, had a ward in this bush, meant that they had a little bit of advantage. But Zekka ends up sliding down as the fight comes back in, so they're not able to continue that. Anytime that you can get a bush lit up and you can fight in and slide in and out of it where they lose sight of you you can cast your spells from fog make it harder to dodge that becomes such a point of strength that you should be looking for especially when you're looking at this brawler right one two three four five six seven brawlers in the game means that you are going to be melee range you you absolutely want to have control words down in those bushes or at least have a far side alteration of able to to get vision for yourself for for that duration of the team fight all right galio macro one in the middle four in the side lane glad to see this galio can join on both sides you can also do three one one uh the position of weakness is the galio that you can go for a fight right there what just happened there was that a Nar throw? Yeah, that was a Nar. So he took the Galio who was trying to slingshot himself, rubber band himself out, and he tried to throw him towards the team. But because they're not able to consolidate this kill on the Nar, it means that they bleed out this turret. Jax was able to stay there the whole time. And now you alternate. Now you have Jax being the point of strength. He's able to potentially flank and two inhibitors being down. Man, this is going to be a tough game to, uh, to fix. Why did this cannon stop attacking the turret? It's not supposed to do that, right? Right, 3720 timestamp. These minions, once they start acquiring on a building, they're not supposed to fall off. Right, but they're not going to care about it. They might send Galio over, right? Galio has the ability to R into this fight. Bin in the middle. This is that 113 we're talking about. Jax can now assist in either direction in the fight if they come onto either side. And Galio can always jump to his trio stack. Uh, and it's not worth for them to go after him because there's nothing there. Rakan's going to bait out the fight. I don't like this Galio out at all. Just completely unnecessary. But it's enough, right? It's, it's just saying, hey, I'm just repositioning, make sure that you guys can't get onto my team and it's enough to get three inhibitors. Call is definitely to step back, uh, at least from Jax. Jax is saying I want to teleport back in maybe, but a team should really be stepping back right now. HLE, you have to engage. This is your one and only chance. It looks like they're not going to find it. Poppy probably had to try to int and find an angle there. Uh, separate the team. Doesn't end up finding it. Three inhibs down. Classic checkmate. If there's a window, you're talking about the fact that you're missing some ultimates here, but you still have the most important one, which is the Kindred, and notice that you have the Guardian Angel picked up. Fourth item, everything swings on this. You're going to see Elixirs being bought. This is their time to just consolidate the end of the game. You don't. The one thing you don't want to get into a position of is having to fork these two where you give one up. Obviously, you just take the Elder and go and try to press into the base, but you'd rather not give up anything, right? You want to suffocate the enemy team, Put them into the base where at the very, like at the best, they just die to the pressure of the supers. 
at worst they struggle with six supers maybe up to 12 near the base and then you step out and you go pick up the baron then you go pick up the or sorry you pick up the elder then you pick up the baron you leave very little counterplay by letting the supers into the base that would be the classic slow play version of this uh and i anticipate based on the fact that the galio ultimate was on cooldown that that's what what they'll take this is just a walk it in walk it in guys if nothing happens we win all right we've got mountain soul we've we've got three turrets down just go in press them in don't give them any windows we're going to go for a nice wide position here don't give them any angle poppy needs to find a way to knock someone out of the fight uh preferably the jacks get them out and then play for the rest of the fight we see an engage here they don't wait they do dash forward which means that they actually do die once they just go for the end they take it with the kindred alt they say hey let's just press for it we're not going to wait we'll go use the supers and go in well done by blg that was an exciting series guys i hope you guys i hope you liked it thanks so much for the support thanks again for everyone it really means a lot when you guys support the channel so if you could hit that subscribe channel subscribe and follow we'll be following the rest of the tournament and it gives us the resources that we need to make this content for you so if you like it make sure you do that also we're going to be doing a give a giveaway uh, for season three split we're going to give away a scholarship to the esports academy check out check it out at gigagamingacademy.com guys next time keep it real peace